Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, and today happens to be National Ice Cream Day. <laughs> and normally, by the time I find out it's, you know, National Donut Day or Bacon or whatever it is, um, I don't have the time to, like, make a card, and I should actually have these written in my planner. Anyway, I've never am on time with anything. That's just my life. But I saw the little graphic that Simon Says Stamp shared this morning and I already had this card idea kind of planned out in my head. Um, I talked about this in a previous video, how I'll like sketch out card ideas when they pop into my head in the middle of the night, etc. So this one was actually, I've been just waiting to find the time. So when I saw that it's National Ice Cream Day, I was like, perfect, I can make this card. So it's already, you know, mostly planned out. I knew what products I wanted to use, etc. So I pulled out the Simon Says Stamp Picture Book Ice Cream Cone Wafer Die and die cut it from Bristol Smooth Cardstock and ran it through multiple times with just the top portion. So I have a whole bunch of pieces of ice cream. And then um, these are how I store my blending foams for my Distress Oxide inks because they don't fit in the lid because the lid's not deep enough and they don't fit underneath because there's nothing to hold them. I've tried taping it underneath. I just, this for me was the perfect way to do it. I've shown this in other videos. These are just little two by two um, Insta, Insta inserts and a little binder and then I label them. This works great for me. And then I've been slowly collecting more and more handles over time. So I will link to all that with the rest of the supplies. So I pulled out a ton of Distress Oxide inks, like so many colors. I ended up using even more than I thought I was going to. And I took some purple tape here. Um, painter's tape would work too. But I just took some purple tape and I have this sticky side facing up. And then I actually like using my washi tape to tape it to my glass mat here. That just keeps it very secure. And then this way, because it's somewhat lower tack, I can stick these pieces onto it and then sponge and not worry about getting fingerprints or smears or anything on all these die cut pieces. So this works really well when you want to sponge like an entire piece of something and it's small and you have nowhere to hold it. And that's what I did. And I am just, I literally use a ton of different colors of Distress Oxides. I'll list them all in the supplies, but I'm just like grabbing at random. Like for the ice cream cone base, I did um, antique linen and I think this is gathered twigs. I'm not even sure. But yeah, I just wanted to, you know, mix a couple colors together to get that sort of ice cream cone sort of a color. And then for the actual ice cream itself, I just went to town. I'm just so many random colors because like ice cream nowadays, you can get it in just about every single color and flavor imaginable. Plus then you add in like sorbet and all that kind of stuff and you end up with like, you can literally get amazing colors. So I used artistic license and all these. I did my basics though. Like this was chocolate ice cream, of course. So I had chocolate. The first one I had done with just the antique linen was vanilla ice cream. And then I started getting a little more creative with the colors. Like here I'm using like tattered rose and then I had seedless preserves and I just had fun with it. So I've super sped this up in the editing. This still didn't take that long, but I would just add sort of a lighter color and then start blending in a bit of a darker color. And then I just use the edge of my fingernail to kind of pop it up off the tape there. So I don't have to touch it because you don't want to smear it. Um, because the Bristol Smooth is really awesome for blending, not just Distress Oxides, but regular Distress inks and other dye inks. Um, but you always need to be careful and make sure things are dry because you can still get like fingerprints and smears on it. So I just use the side of my fingertail, fingernail to pop it up, or you could use, you know, reverse tweezers or whatever, and then set them aside, um, off to the side to dry while I work on the next color. And then after a while I started noticing because it, like the tape is picking up so much ink, it stops being sticky after a while. So I just grab another piece of tape and do the same thing. Flip it over so that the sticky side is facing up and tape it down with a couple little pieces of washi tape. And then I can keep sponging um, colors onto all my different little pieces of ice cream here. So after I was done blending all of these, I did do some die cutting with Simon's new Good Vibes wafer die, and I had sponged that too. I didn't include that in the video because I, I'll change my mind here further on in the card. But um, I did all my sponging, and then I actually saved this piece of tape, and I'm gonna end up doing it um, in the end. I had a rough idea of like the size of card I wanted to make. I wanted to make a taller card. I thought I had enough of these to kind of fill it, but then again, I'll have to add another one later on. So after I did all of my sponging, my card base is more Bristol Smooth cardstock and I had cut it to eight and a half inches by seven and a half. And then I'm going to score it 
at three and three quarters. So this ends up being a three and three quarter inch wide card by eight and a half inches tall. So this will fit in a standard like size 10 business envelope. So I scored it with my Teflon bone folder and then um, really pressed down that crease with the bone folder. And then I pulled out Simon's Clouds for Days stencil and I'm just using Broken China Distressed Oxide ink and I'm barely touching my blending pad to the ink surface. Just picking up the teeniest bit and then just very lightly dragging it off the stencil onto the cardstock. I just wanted a really light cloudy background because this whole stack of ice cream is so tall it goes into the clouds. That was, you know, my thought process behind it. So I just kept moving the stencil around and I would use tape sometimes to cover up some of the center areas because there's like actual full cloud shapes in the center of the stencil which is kind of cool. So I would just cover those up and then just kept rotating the stencil and working my way down and just adding that little tiny bit of the Distress Oxide in Broken China there. I can't wait. The newest set has that tumbled glass. I cannot wait for my order to get here. That's going to be probably my new Holy Grail color. I've used Broken China for all my clouds. I cannot wait for tumbled glass. Anyway, <laughs> after I was done sponging my background, I'm using little tiny 3D foam squares to adhere um, all of this and I start at the bottom with the ice cream cone and then I start like stacking all of these pieces of ice cream and once I got to the top that's when I realized there's enough space to add just one more so I die cut one more and this one I sponged in my personal favorite this is like my holy grail ice cream if I ever get a chance sometimes when we're out and about and someone's serving ice cream and they have tiger tiger ice cream that's literally my favorite but if it has it has to be like a certain brand I'm like super picky about it it's ridiculous and I haven't had it in gosh a year or two at least um and it's funny because I actually hate licorice I don't like licorice I don't like black licorice but I love tiger tiger ice cream I just ugh. So I decided to make Tiger Tiger ice cream anyway. <laughs> so I blend them on um, black soot. At least my black soot Distress Oxide pad is super juicy. So I always need to be careful and try and have a little layer hand with it. So this one I did have to go a little bit more back and forth to kind of get it to look the way I wanted it to and not be too streaky. And then once I was happy with it, I uh, pop more little foam tape onto that and then pop that onto my card base here. And then here I've got that Good Vibes Wafer Dye. And I just, I didn't like it for this card. It covered up too much, but at the same time, it really worked. Looking back now, I'm just like, oh, maybe I should have used it. But too late. Everything's adhered. So I'm going to save that die cut, though, for a future card. So instead, I used the Happy Birthday Script Wafer Dye. And I die cut black cardstock with that. And I, one of the pieces is the full sentiment. And then I die cut multiple pieces using just the back half of the sentiment because it's so big and I want it to go over top of these pieces of ice cream that are popped up. The easiest way to do this is to stack the back half of this sentiment so it has that dimension because it's so narrow there is no way you're going to get foam dye. Even if you use the clear like the cool tack clear that we love that you can't really see as much to get narrow enough little tiny pieces behind that like no. I don't have time for that. This takes less time and effort. So I die cut, I think, four extra pieces of just the back half and then adhered them, like stacked them all together. So the first half is just one layer and then the back half of the sentiment is about four layers. And I just use my multimedium matte adhesive to do that. And then once they're all stacked, I can add the multimedium matte to the entire sentiment and adhere that right over these um, ice cream and whatnot on my card base. So once I have that adhered, I did save the little um, dot for the eye in the original die cut. And I just pop that into place with another tiny little dab of my multimedia mat. And then to complete my sentiment, I actually pulled out a stamp from uh, CZ Design, the Hello, Hello You stamp set. And I found I had a scrap of doll pink cardstock that was already in a narrow little strip. So that was just perfect. I love sometimes when I go through my scraps and I find like the perfect scrap. It's like, oh, well, that was just meant to be. Anyway, so I use my anti static powder tool, stamp the um, sentiment with Simon's clear embossing ink. And then I'm using Simon's detail white embossing powder. And I'm going to melt that with my heat tool. And then once that is melted, I'm just going to use my little um, Cutter B scissors to cut off the end. And then I'll cut a little notch right down the center of the end here. And then you just meet each corner 
with the end of that little notch. So it's got a little flag end on it. And then I just popped more of those little 3D foam squares behind that so I can pop this onto my card front. So once I had that one, I also pulled out the CZ Design Birthday Palooza stamp set and I took the large party stamp and I'm just inking it up like I was just grabbing some of these same oxide inks at random and just tapping like the corners of them all over this sentiment so it's just got a bunch of colors going on and then I'm going to stamp that onto the inside of the card and then I'm going to ink up the rest of the sentiment with just that same black soot distress oxide ink and stamp that right below it so I'll say party like you mean it <laughs> so I've got that stamped um, use my heat tool to heat set that and then I had to add some little highlights and whatnot just a bit of you know definition and whatnot to these little ice cream pieces so I'm just using my little jelly roll 10 white gel pen and drawing on just little dots and lines and little highlights and whatnot and then once I have all of those this entire time I was planning on putting googly eyes on all of these because I just think it gives them something extra and plus it saved me from trying to you know die cut from like black cardstock or anything and you know inserting that into all of these and backing them etc etc it was actually easier just to do the googly eyes so i'm using some studio Cadia four millimeter googly eyes and i'm just holding them with my tweezers and then adding a good dollop of the multimedia matte adhesive and then adhering those over each of the openings. And these are large enough that they will cover the opening, plus there's a little bit around it, so I can use that adhesive and it just glues them in place, no problem. So got those glued into place. And then my last bit of embellishment is some of these um, new Simon Says Stamp Good Vibes confetti that literally look like they're glowing. So I had to, you know, sprinkle those onto my card front. So got those into place and then I'm just gonna adhere them in place with more multimedia matte and my jewel picker, just picking them up, putting down a dab of the adhesive and then pressing those into place. And that is going to finish off my card. So as always, there will be a link below my video to my blog post. I'll have links to all the supplies used. I'll have links to um, the blending tool solutions that I use to store them, etc. I'll have all that um, in the description box below as well as on my blog. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye!